Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC, and we're here at the GPU Technology Conference in San Jose, and I'm here with Ian Buck from NVIDIA. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Hey, Rich. Good, good. So we had the opening keynote today. Yeah. I wonder if you could summarize what uh, was announced today that might be of interest to the HPC crowd. Yeah, we made a ton of announcements today. Yeah. The one we're most excited about is our new Pascal architecture. Uh, Pascal, it, we had this opportunity to create a new architecture that combines a bunch of new technologies from NVIDIA. Uh, the first is 3D stacked memory. This is using stacked memory technology. We can bring the memory chips right on next to the GPU, which dramatically increases the bandwidth and improves power efficiency to really increase the amount of bandwidth and, and capabilities of a GPU. So you don't have to move data across a PCI bus to get at the GPU anymore? No, with stacked memory, the, the, the memory chips now get much closer to the GPU, mm -hmm. so the bandwidth goes up, the capacity capability goes up, and the energy efficiency gets way better. So we can take more of the energy that we're, we're using to, uh, for traditional GDDR memory and spend it on core flops inside the GPU. Okay. So, so that's the one piece, okay? Pascal. The next is, uh, the other technology that we have is NVLink. NVLink is a new chip-to-chip uh, -chip interconnect that NVIDIA has developed uh, that, that can replace PCIe and give much higher data transfers from GPU to GPU or GPU to CPU. A typical PCIe link is maybe only 16 gigabytes a second. And it's been identified as one of the major bottlenecks to GPU computing. With the new NVLink, we can, we can transmit data, move data from CPU to GPU between 5 and 12 times faster than PCIe. What this means for developers is that the GPU can now access the CPU's memory at the same speed the CPU can, really simplifying the programming model, making it an incredibly powerful platform. Okay, so that's NVLink. Now, uh, does that have a, uh, is there an energy cost to pay for moving all that data at that speed? No, we've, we've optimized and created uh, new signaling technology mm. and really optimized the form factor and the, and the link protocol to keep the power constant. Okay, okay, and so this comes with Pascal, which is coming when? Pascal is coming in 2016. Okay. To do this, we've actually created a new form factor. We're calling the Pascal module. It, it places the Pascal, uh, it's a third of the size of a typical PCIe card and supports a, a, a high-speed connection connector that, that can support the new NVLink technology. Okay, so, okay, so a new form factor. Uh, but what, what's this going to plug into? Is it, is it uh, IBM power machines or what's Right, the so we're working, we're working with a bunch of um, uh, OEMs right now. The mm -hmm. one we're, we're announcing today is yeah. IBM. Okay. So IBM is, uh, is going to be working with us to incorporate uh, NVLink into their power architecture. Okay. so that their uh, next generation IBM systems will support uh, both power and an NVLink enabled uh, Pascal module. Okay, so for, for GPU computing in clusters like our HPC friends like to do, this mm -hmm. is a big deal, isn't it? Oh, it's huge. Yeah. We now have uh, an in incredible amount of memory bandwidth. Mm -hmm. We have an interconnect technology between processors they've never had before. It is a, just a huge quantum leap in performance and capability and programmability for GPU-enabled supercomputers. Well, terrific. So I was hoping you'd have something to show us today. You got any show and tell? For yeah, so we, we also are, have received a lot of increased uh, interest in Embedded. And, mm. with the, with, and uh, previously we've announced our Tegra K1 processor. Yep. It incorporates a Kepler-class GPU, the same architecture that we have available today in the Titan supercomputer mm -hmm. at Oak Ridge. Yep. Uh, we're making that available as a development kit. So I have here, we're calling this, is a, the development kit is called Jetson TK1. Um, on this development board, we have a K1 Tegra processor. Yep. Um, it's a nice small form factor. It has all the typical IOs you'd need. This runs Ubuntu Linux, yep. uh, connects to a monitor over HDMI, can actually drive up to a 4K display, mm. and has a ton of GPIO and CSI connections to do things uh, really for the computer vision researchers, robotics researchers. A lot of people really want to take advantage of CUDA and the GPU to uh, do really cool stuff with computer vision and robotics. And they can with this platform. Okay, so how is this different than the Kayla thing you did uh, recently? Uh, this is the natural progression of Kayla. Sure. Kayla really was a, a separate ARM chip yep. with one of our mobile Kepler GPUs. Mm -hmm. Here we have the same performance of Kayla actually delivered right into a single SOC in the Tegra K1. 
So this is a natural progression of where we were with Kayla last year. Very slick. And then on stage today, they had a, a, a car, a self-driving car. Yep. Is, is this the kind of platform that It's using the same Tegra K1 uh, processor to do all the computer vision that you saw in the, in, in the keynote to help detect where is there a parking space I can park into and, and navigate into that parking So that's pretty sophisticated computing from a low wattage, uh, low wattage device, yep. isn't yep. it? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So anything else for uh, uh, HPC fans uh, from today? You know, I think today is a great day for HPC. We announced some really cool products, and I hope ever, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing the future.